Okay, good afternoon everyone. It's Susanna. Hope you're doing great. We are now doing my daily walk Bible reading in English and hopefully I can record my mother tonight for the Cambodian language. Uh, let me go to the Lord and pray as I just shared with the Cambodian um, community of how my mom just shared um, the testimony of how the Lord um, uh, brought us to know him during the war in Khmer, during Khmer Rouge in uh, the 1976 through 79. So God has brought us as uh, Buddhist, uh, Buddhist faith um, conversion to Christianity from the Buddhist religion to Christianity in the early 80s. So may the Lord bless everyone. Father, thank you for this time you've given me. Bless everyone near and far. Um, help us to open the eyes of our understanding to un to know, um, to have full knowledge of your living word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your teaching and guiding us into all truth. Bless everyone and bless the United States of America. And thank you for bringing in bringing us the right leaders in the United States of America, which going to influence the whole world as we have been through the missionaries and the faith that our forefather has brought into our nation. In Jesus' name, I pray for the, the faith to the world that we have um, commissioned from um, Matthew 28, 18 to 20. The Great Commission come from the Lord Jesus Christ, and you have used the United States of America to influence the world from our forefathers, from what I understand. To do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Micah 6, 8. <clears throat> so today we're going to continue reading John chapter 18 in the English. And I want to share, instead of my daily walk today, my daily um, devotion, I want to read, uh, the time has come for a great reflection by David Jeremiah himself, <clears throat> the author of this devotional. Many of you do not know who he is. Just go to davidjeremiah.org and you will read more about him. But I've discovered him since after high school from Bible Broadcasting Network, Charlotte, North Carolina, Bible Radio. Before I read John chapter 18, let me um, wrap up from John 17 overview. The overview ministry to the disciples by God's son. Today's section include what has traditionally been called the upper room discourse. It's it actually takes place partly in an upper room, John 13 through 14, and partly in an unspecified location, John 15 through 17, C 1431. These verses constitute Jesus' final instruction to his disciples before his death. This was for um, before his Jesus went to the cross, friend. In them you will read of the importance of a servant's heart, the necessity of Jesus' return to the Father, and the provision of the Holy Spirit in his absence. There are many spiritual insights yet to be grasped by the disciples, a realization that drives Jesus to his knees as he prays for his followers, both present and future. That was what we completed, friends, from... Oh, got to clear my throat there. Chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 that we just completed. Foot washing in chapter 13 that we read. Fruit bearing in John chapter 14, 15. And then 16, future events. And 17, we just complete the intercession for the disciples talking to God. 
by our Lord Jesus Christ, um, our Lord's prayer to the Father. And today I want to read the resurrected Son of God um, for the chapters 18, 19, 20 through 21. But today we'll begin reading, depend on how long the chapter is. During my break time, I want to read at least... I want to read at least um, part of it, if not all. Okay, it seems to be a pretty fairly long chapter. I'm going to just read half of it since I want to include um, Dr. Jeremiah's um, sermon or message from his July magazine devotional. So chapter 18, the overview after reading the closing events of Jesus' life in, life in each of the other three gospel, you may be tempted to skim John's account, but don't. Put yourself in the sandals of the key individuals in the narrative and feel the emotions as the crucifixion unfolds. Judah's disillusionment, Peter's denial, Pilate's concession, the crowd's uh, The crowd's frenzied outcries, the rugged cross, the nail-pierced hands, the bleeding side, the hurried burial, burial experience with experience with the women, the shock of finding the tomb empty, follow Thomas' transformation from a doubting disciple to a devoted believer. Listen as Peter receives his matching orders to feed God's flock until the shepherd returns. So before all that happens, we're going to read today, um, at least start the chapter 18, the arrest and trials. And then once we complete all that, I will read the my daily walk and insight. Okay, so much is happening, but we already know of our Lord and Savior is risen from the dead three days later but now we're just going through the chapter of what is is uh, being unfolded here for chapter 18 Jesus betrayed and arrested chapter 18 of John after saying these things Jesus crossed the Kidron Valley with his disciples and entered a grove of olive trees Judas the betrayer knew this place because Judah, because Jesus had often gone there with his disciples. The leading priests and Pharisee had given Judas a contingent of Roman soldiers and temple guards to accompany him. Now with blazing torches, lanterns, and weapons, they arrive at the Olive Garden. I don't know which uh, Jesus film you watch, but the Jesus film that I um, see that they showed us uh, was created in 1979, but in the early 80s, we watched it in Thailand, in Cambodian language, and I was only a little girl when, um, when I was unveiled to the truth of the gospel through my mother's reading in Khmer Bible and through the film, uh, the Jesus film in 1979, and I it was um, being filmed, being showed on a big screen um, outside where the kids were sitting outside uh, of our cam and watched that Jesus film in Cambodian language. That was in the early 90s. So that was the first time I ever seen it in picture film. And just picture this, have you seen, I'm pretty sure many of you watch the Jesus film in different uh, version. Um, um, aside from the um, the passion as being recently created from by Mel Gibson but this is the one was the classic one that I watched when I became a Christian so here we go now with blazing torches interns and weapons they arrive at the olive grow Jesus fully realized all that was going to happen to him so he stepped forward to meet them who are you looking for? He asked. Jesus of Nazarene, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. With them. As Jesus said, I am he, they all drew back and fell to the ground. 
so you think the angel of God was there 10,000 10, thousands of angels were there you don't think that they could take these um, these Roman soldiers but yet it go back to what Jesus said they didn't take my life I laid it down he could have just let the 10,000 of his angel whack the jaw, so to speak, whack him. Because here we go, it explains here. Jesus said, I am he. They all drew back and fell to the ground, just like that. Once more, he asked them, who are you looking for? And again, they replied, Jesus, the Nazarene. I told you that I am he, Jesus said. And since I am the one you want, let these others go. He did this to fulfill his own statement. I did not lose a single one of those you have given me. Praise God. So Jesus, his most concern is his disciple. His life, he's laid it down. It, he laid his life down since the conversation that they had, he and his father in heaven. Before the foundation of the world, friends, it was already decided. Jesus has given his life for you and for me. Not when he was um, just born again, born as a new babe with Mary holding him. But before that, it has already been decided. Here he's playing his script. So it's like a Hollywood prepare a script and you're just reading it and doing the acting. And this is exactly what Jesus did. He's just going with the motion of what it's already been written. So then Simon Peter drew a sword and slashed off the right ear of uh, Malchus. Kind of like going back to um, President Trump ear, right? They were aiming, the, the, the young man was aiming to kill him. But instead, the Lord Holy Spirit tell him to turn his head. Otherwise, he would have got shot and assassinated on that Saturday, right? At the um, Pennsylvania rally. Unfor uh, it's fortunately for us that the president is alive today in Jesus' name. And he's gonna run for the 2024 presidential election. Praise God. Kind of go go with this uh, Peter's, um, s Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into his shed Shall I not drink from the cup of suffering the Father has given me? So it's like, Peter, put back the sword. Don't mess up this plan. The plan is, I'm going to go to the cross. You cannot, you can't stop it. In Jesus' name, praise God. So Jesus at the high priest's house. So the soldiers, their commanding officer, and the temple guards arrested Jesus and tied him up. First, they took him to Anath to Annas, to Annas, since he was the father-in-law of uh, Caiaphas, the high priest at that time. Caiaphas was, was the one who had told the other Jewish leaders, it's better that one man should die for uh, the people. Yep, we remember that. Peter's first denial. Simon Peter followed Jesus and did another one of the disciples. The other disciple was acquainted with the high priest, so he was allowed to enter the high priest's courtyard with Jesus. Peter had to stay outside the gate. Then the disciple who knew the high priest spoke to the woman watching at the gate, and she let Peter in. The woman asked Peter, The woman asked Peter, You are not the one that you you're not one of the man's disciple, are you? Do you think the ladies was planned? Because God already spoken this. Remember um, when Jesus said, there's one that's betrayed me seated at this table. And then um, Peter said, not I, I'm willing to die for you, Lord Jesus. And Jesus said, you gonna die for me? When the, um, when the rooster crow, third time, you will deny me. So he's like, what? What is that all about? So here we go. Peter, you're not the one man's disciple, are you? No, he said. 
I am not. So Jesus already foreknew this. He already seen this in his script that he's going to deny. But that's part of all it has to happen. Because it was cold, the household servants and the guards had made a charcoal fire. They stood around it, warming themselves, and Peter stood with them, warming himself. The high priest questioned Jesus. Inside, the high priest began asking Jesus about his followers and what he had been teaching them. Jesus replied, Everyone knows what I teach. I have preached regularly in the synagogues and the temple where the people gather. I have not spoken in secret. Why are you asking me this question? Ask those who heard me. They know what I said. Then one of the temple guards standing nearby slapped Jesus across the face. Is that the way to answer the high priest, he demanded. You know, here it is, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, letting the high priest smack him in the face. This is part of his statement when he say, I lay down my life, which means you can do whatever you want because I'm the one that has a power to lay myself down to let you do this because otherwise you could you can't touch the hair on my head because I would whack you down or you wouldn't even have a chance to breathe you know with 10,000 and 10,000 of hosts of angels on his side you think he allowed him to smack him but because of his statement he said I lay my life down for you he's going through all this for you for me and for you friend so get this Peter's second and third denials. Meanwhile, as Simon Peter was standing by the fire warming himself, they asked him again, you're not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, saying, no, I am not, but one of the household slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, didn't I see you out there? In the olive grove with Jesus, again Peter denied, and immediately a rooster crowed. Can you imagine the sadness in Peter's? Oh my gosh, this is what Jesus told me, that I will deny him three times. When the rooster crowed, Jesus trial before Pilate, verse 28. Jesus' trial before Caiaphas ended in the early hours of the morning. Then he was taken to the headquarters of the Roman governor. His accuser didn't go inside because it would defile them, and they wouldn't be allowed to celebrate the Passover. So Pilate, the governor, went out to them and asked, What is your charge against this man? Who wouldn't have handed him We wouldn't, excuse me, we wouldn't have handed him over to you if he weren't a criminal, they retorted. Then take him away and judge him by your own law, Pilate told them. Only the Romans are permitted to execute someone, the Jewish leaders replied. This fulfilled Jesus' prediction about the way he would die. Then Pilate went back into his headquarters and called for Jesus to be brought to him. Are you the king of the Jews? He asked him. Jesus replied, is this your own question or did others tell you about me? You know, it's interesting that here Jesus know them, see them, see, read through their mind and the conversation that they had with him and all these accusation and all these questioning. You know, Jesus know them. He can read your mind. He can read your heart. And here they are trying to ask him these questions. But yet, he already know what's in his heart. Praise God. Am I a Jewish pilot, retorted. Your own people and their leading priests brought you to me for trial. Why? What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not earthly kingdom. If it were, my follower would flight. My follower would My followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders, but my kingdom is not of this world, Pilate said. So you are a king, Jesus responded. You say I am a king. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. Verse 38, what is truth, Pilate asked. 
Then he went out again to the people and told them, He is not guilty of any crime, but you have a custom of asking me to release one prisoner each year at Passover. Would you like me to release this king of the Jews? But they shouted back, No, no, this man, we want Bar Bar we want Barabbas. Barabbas was a revolutionary. Can you imagine? They rather release a criminal than the Lord Jesus Christ who came to save the world. So again, verse 40, but they shouted back, No, no, not not no, not this man. We want Barabbas. Barabbas was a revolutionary. And watch that and watch the world today. You know, people are being um People are being blinded by, by the evil spirit, by the, the evil one, by the devil, the God, the liturgy, the God of this world. What, we, what we've known as evil, they call it good. What we call it good, they think it's evil. They believe it's evil. So here I am. Let me bring to what we're facing here in the United States to give you a good example. I don't know what you thought of President Trump or President Biden, but one, you can read on what they stand for, what their administration or what their belief is, what they represent. Just, just forget about the mainstream media. Just think of what's going on in the United States of America. Just look at our political arena, whether you're on the left side or on the right side, it doesn't matter. For me here, let's say President Trump and President Biden. Okay, what's going on with our borders right now? Say President Biden is fighting for America. Okay, if he's fighting for America, why are all the borders open? Why are anybody can flood to United States to harm United States? Why are the borders open if he's fighting for United States? Okay, we're going to do a court session here, just like they back in two, uh, 2,000 years ago. They say, no, release Barnabas. We want Barnabas. You can go ahead, take Jesus. Here it is. Here's a man. Here's an example. Here's a man that came to do only but good, Acts 10.38. He came to heal the sick, save and recover the blind, and doing all these good, yet... They want to crucify him. Don't get this wrong. I am not comparing a man with Jesus. I am just going back to 2,000 years ago. What people call good, bad, evil. What people call evil as good. We are living in that era now again. Praise God. Praise God. We are living in that era again. Our, board, our southern border are open. There are drugs of all kinds of drugs. There's rape. There's murder. Everything is going on in the border. We don't need to discuss uh, mainstream media. Let's discuss the two men. One is for abortion. One is not for abortion. One is to look out for America. Which platform, which administration are you going to vote for? I am not advocating any man. I am going for what the Word of God says. The Word of God says Jesus came to give you life, life more abundantly. I am not supporting any illegal immigration. I am supporting life to the core because Jesus came to give us life, life more abundantly. I'm going to wrap it up so I can go to my next session here. Just take a few minutes. Maybe we'll read um, what Dr. Je Jeremiah said another day. But here we are, completed John chapter 18. Let's pray for the United States of America. Pray for the presidential election. As we just read how Jesus being captured, not captured, he laid down his life. Here it is. He let the high priest smack him in the face when he is the king of king and lord of lord, came down to do just what his father told him to do, to, came, to come to save which are lost. 
He comes to heal, save. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus come, came to save which that which are lost. Came to save us, friend. He laid down his life for us. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and grace. Thank you for your beloved Son. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Bless everyone who watching and praying and study the word of God with me, friend. Lord, thank you for your love and grace. Let me say goodbye with these uh, few scriptures, the protection scripture. Deuteronomy 33, 29, I will be happy because your blessing is on me. God, you are saving me and being a shield for me each day. Your enemy submits. Your enemy submits in obedience to you and your truth marches on the highest of place. Psalm um, 9-9, you are a protective high tower for a press and a refuge in a stronghold in times of trouble, such as high cost, destitution, and desperation. Psalm 27-1, Lord, you are my light and my salvation, so whom shall I fear? Lord, you are the strength of my life, the of whom shall I be afraid? We are familiar with um, Psalm 27. Genesis 15, 1, the Lord is my protective shield and my abundant compensation. He rewards faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. God bless you. May the Lord keep his face shine upon you and give you hope. Shalom, shalom, shalom. God bless you. Bye-bye for now. Susanna.